to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. So in this new series, we're going to do an overview of a few peptides to be considered nootropics that are thought to enhance cognition. We've dissected these peptides in the past, but since organization of content has changed a bit and my mic is no longer a potato with a fork sticking out of it, I think it's time to revisit the topic. And as you can guess, a lot of the research on the more mind and mood affecting peptides was conducted out of Eastern Europe. They seem to have a lot more fun experimenting with these peptides. So if you're like me, when you hear words, words like Samax, the first thing that comes to mind is actually Russia or like Putin riding a horse or something. But before we get started, it's important to note that we've already talked about the peptides we're going to be addressing in this series, which includes Samax, Selenc, and Cerebrolysin. So we've got a couple videos on Samax and Selenc here on the YouTube channel. There's a video of Cerebrolysin on the Patreon, but we're going to revisit all three of these peptides in a cute little three-part series. But given our focus is on nootropic activity primarily, that's what we're going to address. We'll go through each peptide, review where they came from and how it works or its thought to work, and then address the research in particular. However, before we get into that, it's time for my little self plug where if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, it's easily the best way to support a tiny peptide YouTuber like me who will read the research so you don't have to. But I will, of course, link the consulted resources below because I'm all about spreading the love. Speaking of spreading the love, this series will be like the little Melana Corton kick we went on over the past couple weeks where we talked about the big three, MT1, MT2, and PT141, all in proximity to each other so we could get a good grasp on each and kind of jump off each video. So don't forget to check out those if you want a comprehensive overview on each. But just like those peptides operate through the melanocortin receptor system, Cimax is crazily enough thought to also play a role in this pathway, although at this point that's pretty much just speculation as are most things we with this peptide as we'll see, but food for thought. So Cimax is a peptide comprised of just seven amino acids, hence its name, which apparently comes from some combination of seven and the fact that it's derived from ACTH. So I tried to figure it out on Google Translate, but my Russian comprehension is absolutely zero. So if I am lucky enough to have any Russian viewers or people who can speak Russian, comment where this word comes from because it seems like it'll be pretty cool to find that out, but I tried my best. And the structure of this heptapeptide peptide is that of a segment of ACTH, or adrenocorticotropic hormone, and it's proposed to have a multitude of neurocognitive effects. And just like alpha-MSH, or alpha-melanocyte stimulating hormone, is a melanocortin receptor agonist that served as the basis for melanotan-1 and melanotan-2, ACTH is also one of the endogenously produced melanocortin receptor agonists that, as we already said, inspired production of Cimax. Interestingly, the peptide is utilized in Russia for management of not only structural neurological conditions, but also in circumstances where there may be therapeutic effects of increased learning capabilities and memory formation. And although we know the basis of Cimax is ACTH, we are vastly unaware of how it works. However, it's likely in a way to operate through increased transcription of BDNF, or brain-derived neurotrophic factor, via its signaling receptor called TRKB, or better put, by affecting neurotrophin synthesis in a way, which would contribute to brain cell survival, function, and neuroplasticity. From the limited research, it seems to be a generally tolerable, potent peptide. However, in spite of poor oral bioavailability, you'll predominantly see it in intranasal and injectable formulations. So let's just back up a little bit. There exists a presumption that ACTH-related peptides influence learning processes via increased circulation of monoamines, which are neurotransmitters and neuromodulators like dopamine or epinephrine, epinephrine, serotonin, just to name a few. And as would be expected with a peptide thought to increase expression of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, ACTH in particular has shown to have a trophic influence on cultured neurons. And by this I mean that in the selection of neurons, it showed an ability to essentially encourage nutrient uptake exhibited by the growth of these nerve fibrils. As such, in the 1970s, researchers began toying with the idea of forming different compounds based based off of ACTH, noting that the amino acid residues proline followed by glycine followed by proline showed the longest acting activity and this three amino acid chain is present in Cimax, and it's thought to strongly modulate its actions. And I'll reinforce this idea once again.
and the details of how Samax works and the factors it will certainly influence in humans is pretty much entirely up in the air and hugely speculative. However, by the early 2000s, Samax has found its way into Russian clinical practice predominantly in the context of different primary neurological conditions. And the proposed neuroprotective effects of Samax is thought to be modulated via anti-hypoxic and antioxidant properties. And interestingly, animals given the peptide showed increased lifespan when placed at higher altitude. Samax does lack extensive clinical data in humans, with most research being conducted in animal models, particularly rodents. In studies with rats, Samax has shown positive effects on cognition and has also been reported to reduce anxiety responses. It's also been observed to decrease the time needed for rats to navigate a food-motivated maze in a dose-independent manner, and it's demonstrated a beneficial impact on the conditioned passive avoidance reflex, which is a form of conditioning or learning where animals avoid negative outcomes by not performing certain actions. And as we touched on, a lot of the benefit is thought to be through brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is implicated in learning, memory, and synaptogenesis, but this idea is still under investigation. However, interestingly, BDNF shares a fascinating relationship with stroke, and I'll quote one piece, it is well established that low levels of circulating BDNF are associated with a high risk of stroke and poor recovery, while BDNF expression in the brain is acutely stimulated by a stroke. Additionally, which was pretty interesting also in rats, is that Samax has exhibited an ability to possibly negate or significantly lessen the neurotoxicity of heavy metal poisoning like lead toxicity. And I know the topic of this conversation is purely on neurotropic ability, and so I sought to find some human data on Samax, which is scanned and predominantly took place at least a couple decades ago. However, I was able to get my hands on a piece from the mid-1990s, which is where a lot of the quoted human clinical data data comes from, and trust me, you'll see that it is minimal. And there were a couple different arms of the study, however, the number of participants was incredibly small, and the features tested were computational ability via memorizing numbered images, EEG during a cognitive activity, and then EEG during a cerebral ischemia model where participants were encouraged to pretty much hyperventilate, and EEG stands for electroencephalogram, which is used to take a look at brain waves. And the results are meh, and even kind of funny because although the SMAX group showed a better number of correct responses when compared to the placebo group, they also showed a higher number of false responses. And the researchers don't know why, but suspect that SMAX administered made these individuals more anxious. My take is the sample size is so small, all these results pretty much become irrelevant, but I digress. However, according to the results obtained after the three-minute hyperventilation test, there are attenuated EEG changes in the group of just nine people who took the peptide, but this is a small sample size and an imperfect model of cerebral ischemia, but I'll give it to him. Why not? I hand something to him. In general, although I think Samax is most promising in the context of post-stroke recovery, from a more acute cognitive boosting standpoint, the research is limited and pretty much non-existent, generally unavailable and insignificant in humans, and not present in convincingly well-done studies. Of the actual data you can access, I can't get my hands on anything outside of that 19 96 piece and it doesn't look like any data in humans hasn't come out of Eastern Europe. All we've got are some old papers with poorly conducted analyses with minimal sample sizes. I will say that if somebody with traumatic neurogenic illness shows functional and motor improvement, possibly, quite likely, there will be a result of reasonable elevation in mood, which could therein impact sleep and cognitive function. But if we're strictly analyzing cognition as a function of Samax use, I'm not seeing it. I'm also not going to say some of the rodent research with regards to fear and conditioning isn't impressive to me. All I'm saying is is that minimal to no data indicates that in humans, this will be a nootropic godsend. I'd like to see more up-to-date literature and robust human trials on factors like learning and memory in relation to this compound to draw a more definitive conclusion about cognitive boosting claims, but that's all I got for you in this one. Give us a thumbs up if you like this series, thumbs down if you hate it. Feel free to raise your pitchforks either way. Engagement, I think, doesn't hurt, and that's what people tell me. They say even bad press is good press. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if my ego can stand it either. Regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Link to the Patreon will be in the description below if you're looking for another way to support the channel. Have a good one. Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. <laughs>